uh, I was hired at the last minute to improvise this talk. So since I've been hired, I will uh, add a shameless plug to the to the talk. I'm one of the authors of uh, Swing by Example, which is a book on the uh, on, uh, an open source small talk. So it's a book uh, for developers intended to explain. Uh, how strange the language is and what the tools are because it's a bit different from what people are used. And the other thing is, uh, you can you can hide all the other stuff if you huh? click on the jelly bean in the top, of the top right. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> a little bit higher here. You can. So we are working on a, uh, actually a fork of Squeak. So Squeak is an open source model uh, um, initially developed at uh, Apple by the uh, Alan Kay and the initial uh, some guys from the initial small talk team. Uh, so it's really cool, it's uh, very nice. The problem is the community is really dispersed. There are many people uh, um, with uh, very different in interests. Uh, and no, um, there is not really a leader pushing the, the platform in a, in a definite direction. So it's, it has been kind of uh, not moving in any direction and the code got uh, a little ugly uh, with time. So we decided to just fork it and make a, a version for developers. Uh, so we are cleaning lots of stuff in there, adding new tools. Uh, if you know Squeak, you probably remember the first initial reaction, which is <coughs> it looks like uh, Lego or, uh, or Play School or I don't know what. So Faro looks like uh, something a little bit better, like anti alias fonts and a decent team and so on. Uh, and since uh, a few months now, the the, the Seaside Web Developers Framework, uh, Web Framework Developers, uh, use Faro as, as their uh, platform and distribute uh, the, the one-click image for uh, Seaside uh, based on based on Faro. So that's all, uh, and I will leave the URLs if you want. Could you maybe uh, show the projector a bit more? Uh, a little bit higher. Yeah. 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 How do, how do you say full screen in German? Um, full screen. Command shift F. Ah. Okay. So it's all the key or something else? So. So David Chisnall is uh, the author of uh, Pragmatic Smartphone, and my name is Daniel Polebe, by the way. Uh, uh, you have to stop it, it's <laughs> running. Hooking <laughs> off. So, first I will present quickly uh, the, the small talk language uh, and its concepts, then uh, talk a bit about pragmatic small talk. So, unfortunately, I won't be able to uh, explain uh, all in the details, but. Uh, 
Yes, but there is no way to let it That would be the so as you might know, Smalltalk is uh, um, the prototypical object-oriented language. Uh, if I can say, it's uh, completely dy dynamic. There is no uh, type information anywhere. Well, there is, but only at runtime. Uh, it's also fully object-oriented, which means integers, strings, booleans, everything is object. Uh, there is no primitive type so of, uh, uh, of any kind. Uh, so in the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, Smalltalk um, uh, inspired, inspired the, the development of the self language. So uh, you probably don't know about self, but you know about uh, JavaScript, which is based on the, the same principle, which is object-oriented programming without classes. You just have objects and you clone them <coughs> to get new ones. And another uh, aspect of self that you might know about without, without know, knowing about is the JVM, which basically uh, uh, well, Java initially funded the development of self then decided it's a worthless language, we just fired the, the team. The team went to develop uh, uh, another small talk based on self and on the compilation uh, uh, ideas in self. And then Sun bought them back for a um, quite nice amount of money uh, to build the, the JVM. So the, the JIT and the, the basically the, the VM technology in Hotspot is comes from self and self comes from small talk. So on the syn syntax uh, side, uh, small talk is really minimal. It's a bit strange because there is no dot notation to call uh, methods. Uh, so yeah, you can assign to a variable using uh, colon equals. Uh, and then to send a message, you just say, uh, "Reserver, please run." Simply with uh, with uh, a space like this. So there are syntactically there are three kinds of messages: uh, unary messages, uh, which are just a single word, and you you give an order to uh, the the receiver. Uh, keyword messages, it's really like Objective C except you don't have the brackets around the, the message. So do something with end is a single message with two arguments, A and B. Uh, the syntax is a bit strange, but it allows you to write in, a, uh, in some kind of uh, big Latin uh, uh, English. And the third kind of messages is not here because David doesn't know smart talk enough. Uh, and it's uh, messages that take two arguments, and those are basically the opera operators. So syntactically, uh, this is a keyword message, even if it has uh, one a receiver and, and just one argument. But the, the operators, you can define them. You can define plus uh, as a message, or uh, plus plus, or whatever. Uh, and and you can say uh, uh, receiver plus three, two plus three is uh, uh, you are sending the message plus with argument three to the receiver two. So the the difference between all these kind is simply the the priority. So unary messages are uh, the highest priority than uh, binary operators, binary messages, and this kind is the lowest priority. So you don't. That was done to so that you don't need um, uh, as many parentheses. Uh, so one other funny point 
uh, about uh, small talk is that there is no flow control uh, keyword uh, in the language. Uh, so that's a bit strange, but uh, we, because it means if you want to uh, write a condition, well, it's just a message, if true, if false, that you send to a Boolean. So you say, uh, this is Mr. True. Uh, if you are true, then you execute this block. And if you are false, you execute this. It's quite beautiful, actually, because this is the. Uh, this is really implementing uh, a control structure with the the object-oriented parading. That means uh, there are two classes: the class true and the class false. And class true implements this by just executing this block, the first block, and class false execute this message, and uh, implements this message by just executing the, the second block. So you don't need uh, the usual conditional as in other languages. Uh, what's nice about this is, is that, a bit like in Lisp, you can define your own uh, control stru structures. So. Uh, if there wasn't a while loop in the log language, you could implement it just like that. Uh, so on the class boolean, you say, uh, you define the method while true, which takes a block as an argument. And uh, if uh, the, uh, the receiver is, uh, uh, yeah, if you, when you evaluate the, the receiver and the result is true, then you, you call the block again. Uh, you call the block, and you evaluate yourself. It's just a recursive definition of the of the while loop. <coughs> Is yes. a small talk properly that what you said? Uh, that's a good question, and I guess it depends on the on the implementations. Yeah. There is a bit of a trick here because actually. Uh, in uh, most implementations, the compiler inlines this. Okay. So it, when you browse the code, you see that, and it could run in a simulator or with an, emu uh, an interpreter, but the compiler actually just does a, a C one. Okay. okay, so uh, on the other side, yes? I have a question about why. Um, how can self change be, since you said true and false are classes? There's a true class and a false class. Isn't how uh, can the self value change? Maybe I mixed because the, no, this is implemented on the block class. So oh you send okay. a message. You have a, this is a block. So this is a literal notation for a block, basically a lambda expression. So this one doesn't have an argument. So, uh, that's all. And you send the meta send the message <laughs> while true to a to a function, basically. So oh okay. while while you are. Uh, yeah, you have a boolean function, and while while this function evaluates to true, then you evaluate the body. Yes. Um, so um, the problem with small talk is uh, it was designed to run uh, in the 70s, 80s on a machine that was about a cubic uh, meter. Uh, uh, implemented uh, especially for the language, so the processor would be. Uh, yeah, the processor instructions were written to run this fast. Uh, unfortunately, on standard machines in the 80s, that wasn't really ideal, so uh, some guy uh, decided to uh, uh, implement the, the object model the way you, you code in Smalltalk uh, as a, a layer of RC. Uh, and this was uh, called the Objective C. So you just have the C language uh, with a bit of the, the small talk message uh, syntax uh, over it. 
Um, yes, and it's a bit different from Smalltalk because you have the, the C types. Uh, so integers are, are not um, the basic integers are not objects. Uh, you have the flow control. You use the flow control from C. Uh, the advantage is that uh, if you have seen the, the videos from the next, uh, the demos from the next machines, uh, it's, it runs on the 25 megahertz uh, uh, CPU and it's just fast, faster than what you can get. Uh, no, okay. Um, so why uh, was Smalltalk interesting to the the Etoile project? Uh, the point is the the whole uh, syntax is about half a page. If you write it in, uh, if you write the grammar, it takes about 20 minutes to learn and maybe one week uh, because the tools are a bit uh, and the, the the way to think is a, uh, a bit different from. What people are used to with uh, usual languages. Uh, it really matches well Objective C because Objective C matches Smalltalk uh, from the beginning. Uh, and since you don't have the, the low level uh, details of C, it's uh, even uh, nicer to read on a day to day. So uh, the as part of a, of a toilet, David developed a, a, a small talk compiler, which was uh, initially released with the, the current uh, version of Etoile. Uh, uh, it's a compiler, but actually it's just a syntax for the Objective-C uh, 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 runtime. So you think you write small talk, but actually all the classes are from the Objective-C runtime. Uh, the only difference is you can just uh, run a, a small talk file without uh, uh, compiling it. If you evaluate it, it will get compiled uh, by the, the runtime uh, dynamically. Uh, the, the whole compiler is based on uh, LLVM. Uh, and the good point of that is that LLVM is really flexible and you, you can use it either to to implement the, the just-in-time compiler in a uh, in a runtime, or you can generate a complete uh, a binary uh, library that you you can link uh, after with uh, uh, normal C or Objective C code. Um, Okay, so the yeah, the different components that uh, implement <coughs> the, this uh, in Atoile are uh, first the language kit. So this is a, uh, uh, basically a, a, new, a new runtime uh, and the, the set of, uh, of code generators based on uh, an LLVM. So with language kit, basically you have an objective, uh, uh, an object-oriented uh, runtime, on top of which you can implement various object models. Uh, and Smalltalk was the, the first, uh, the first one implemented. Mm -hmm. uh, and also you have the uh, Etoile dynamic language compiler, uh, which is the, the front end that you can use with. Uh, uh, yeah, as a, as a, uh, uh, as is it for LLVM too? Yeah, this is just the, the, the front end based on all the rest to compile. So you can just say uh, slash bang bin uh, EDLC and write a small part code, and you can just run this as a, just like a bash uh, script. So in terms of size, I think the, uh, the idea was to make uh, that uh, uh, or to show that uh, it's uh, really small. So the whole thing is less than 10,000 lines of code, and uh, the small talk specific part, so the parser and the 
the abstract syntax tree are just 800 lines of, lines of code. So if you basically, uh, for a new language, you have uh, that much effort uh, to, yeah, to add to it. Yeah, so uh, yeah, basically, if you want to use C libraries or do high performance uh, stuff uh, in some place, you still want to use Objective C or C. But that doesn't prevent you to use Smalltalk in the same application because. As I said, Smalltalk is just a different syntax from the for the same execution uh, uh, layer. So when you have an object, uh, it's just an object from the runtime, and you can send messages or talk, uh, talk to it the exact same way, uh, whatever the, the syntax you are using currently. Uh, so. You can add Smalltalk uh, methods to Objective-C uh, classes. In fact, uh, all, the all the best classes that you, you have in the, in the Smalltalk are the, the, the Objective-C classes from the, uh, the standard Objective-C library. Uh, yes, and you can implement uh, new classes uh, new subclasses of Objective C classes just in Smalltalk uh, without any uh, uh, any overhead, uh, and it's not a virtual machine in the sense, in the usual sense that you have a uh, yeah, JIT compiler and bytecodes and and stuff like that. Uh, all the, the methods are compiled to standard C. Uh, just like Objective-C does, uh, and in the end what you have is uh, the, a really small runtime library that's, that is uh, quite similar to the, the, the existing Objective-C one from Apple, uh, and standard uh, um, Objective-C classes or binaries. Uh, so how does it work? Uh, I think I will get a bit fuzzy on these slides because I didn't write it. Uh, so basically, uh, the problem is, since you have uh, uh, primitive types on the Objective-C side, uh, and that doesn't exist at all on the Smalltalk side, you have to, uh, to box and unbox uh, to convert uh, values. So int in C have to be converted in uh, Smalltalk integers. Uh, and back, so this is really simple uh, uh, to do, but it has to to be done automatically uh, by the compiler. Uh, fortunately, the Objective C runtime gives uh, us a lot of uh, information about the, the types of the the arguments and the return types of the, the methods. So you can you, the compiler can guess that and infer what transformations uh, it needs to do. Uh, and that's actually a, a nice, nice uh, thing because uh, then the compiler can inline all the the arithmetic, uh, which is a bit difficult to do in the uh, in the um, the more traditional small talks. Uh, Yes, so you get the, the type information from the from the own type. Uh, so that was the kind of standard thing when you want to implement a small talk or, an, or a clean object uh, language over, uh, over C. Uh, but there was uh, uh, a couple of a uh, bit more difficult points, like implementing the, the blocks and the uh, uh, non local returns. So blocks are basically lambda expressions functions uh, that are objects. So you can pass them around uh, as arguments, store them in variables, execute them uh, as you want. 
uh, and non local returns are a bit of a uh, black magic thing which I will explain later. Um, so, yeah, this is a bit of uh, implementation. I'm not sure if uh, uh, this is really useful. Question? Yep. Uh, what happens in Smalltalk when you do a non local return from a function which has already returned? Uh, that pops you a debugger window, I guess. Okay, it breaks. Yes, but it should break. Oh, so what is it supposed to do? Huh? What should what should it do? Well, it can only break if you if the if you return to a context that doesn't exist. That's an error. So. Uh, <coughs> what happens if I jump off the bridge? Well, the ground. Oh, that's yeah. bridge is broken. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's uh, how the, the blocks are, are implemented. Hmm? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, cool. So yeah, the point is in the standard small talks, the blocks are uh, uh, the blocks are uh, instances of a class that is named block context. So they are standard objects, and there is no real stack because they are just linked objects with a pointer to, to the next. Uh, instead of having a frame like in, uh, a stack of frames like in a C, you just uh, have objects with uh, a next pointer. So it's really nice that it's a bit slow and this is a way to make it uh, run a, a bit faster without losing the, the object uh, aspect. We'll just uh, go over this. And about non-local returns. So uh, here you have a method that calls uh, the conditional uh, uh, message and in the argument, there is a return, and the return returns the method it was written in. So if you see the uh, the return sign, you know when if this is executed, you end up here, or oh. you return from this method. So this is a problem because that uh, that block is an object. It's passed as an argument to if true, and then if true evaluates it. Uh, but if you did that with uh, another um, uh, one of your own uh, methods, you could very well store the the block in a variable, return, do some stuff, and then fetch the block back from the variable and try to execute it, and then you have a problem. Then you have a, a problem. Uh, so yeah, it's. Uh, a bit tricky to get right uh, in the in the implementation, uh, and in the end, it's obviously a bit slower than a standard uh, return from the top uh, level of the of the method. Uh, the point is, you only pay uh, if you use it, and the 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 uses the uh, usually you only use it. Like like this as a good uh, guard close, or uh, to just escape uh, from a uh, from a method if you know uh, you want it uh, to work. So if you really need the performance, then you just uh, uh, flip the code the other way or around and try to uh, to uh, write it in a functional way. Uh, so what? Can we do now with the pragmatic small talk? So the one example is uh, one idea is to write application. Uh, there is a, 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 a multimedia iTunes-like uh, player named Melody, which is part Objective C and, and part uh, small talk currently. But uh, no, no, pure. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, and there are a couple of uh, 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 new applications written in this way. So this is just 
the standard dot uh, app bundle uh, format, except instead of a binary, you get a, a small talk uh, source file uh, there. Uh, yeah, and then you can use since Smalltalk is dy dynamically compiled and not dynamically, mo uh, you can dynamically modify the, the Smalltalk uh, program, then you can use it to split uh, lots of, uh, of places in the in the envi environment or modify the existing applications. So uh, already currently, Objective C allows you to uh, swap methods at runtime. Uh, so obviously, Smalltalk uh, uh, allows you to, uh, to do that. Uh, and the point is, the framework loads uh, any Smalltalk bundles uh, from uh, from your place when you run an application. So basically, if you put the right Smalltalk file in uh, the right place, it will get loaded when you run an application, and you can swap code uh, at will. So it's a bit funny because. Uh, uh, yeah. um, it actually removes the, the, the need for the, the source code of uh, the application if you want to modify it to adapt it. You just have to know uh, uh, the what classes are, th are there and what I APIs they have. And then you can use them and uh, slap your code uh, over that. Uh, so there are a few uh, 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 projects uh, underway uh, in the in the in it one, uh, one of which is the, the code browser or code monkey. Uh, so the idea is to basically uh, 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 get a small talk like browser where you can uh, inspect uh, the existing code. So this will, uh, if you have a, a small talk program, it will parse it and present you the, the different classes and methods, and you can browse them, but it will also do the, the same for the Objective-C classes, uh, except you won't get the code here, but you can see what, uh, what the classes are able to do. Uh, and then you can define uh, new methods uh, on the fly. Uh, whether it's Objective-C or, or small talk. Um, yeah, so it has nice features like syntax highlighting and introspection and so on. Yeah. And the plan is to embed it in every app. So you will get a, a develop menu item somewhere. Uh, in any application, and if you use that, you get code monkey, and you can start to uh, to fix the uh, what you don't like in the, in the application. Uh, for the future, we uh, David plans to implement uh, uh, some more languages. There is already uh, uh, an implementation of uh, ECMAS ECMAS script. Uh, underway, so maybe the IO or self uh, uh, models uh, will be implemented. Uh, this is all quite easy to do because the, the runtime is not uh, is agnostic uh, for the the object model in it implements, so you can. Uh, write a prototype uh, object models or class-based uh, object models on it uh, without uh, too much uh, too much effort. Uh, so LLVM is already uh, quite nice to get uh, to get performance because uh, you just get binary methods, but the the whole stack of, uh, of uh, uh, optimizations is not uh, as complete as it could be. Uh, as perfect as it could be. Uh, and then uh, there is a bit 
bit of a confusion between the Apple, GNU, and it's only Objective C uh, runtime. So currently, it's uh, uh, yeah, in a bit of a, of a flux. But uh, uh, David wants to uh, to complete uh, an Objective C uh, to complete his runtime to to be compatible with completely with Objective C and use that as the the standard runtime. Uh, inside the 20. Uh, is there any particular reason for having the, uh, another runtime besides? Hmm? Is there any other reason for implementing another um, objective runtime probably besides speed, or does it have any other additional features? Uh, unnecessary probably. It's a very small runtime. Yeah, it's really based on a self runtime. Yeah, it's really small. It doesn't expect classes. Uh, but is it necessary for actually, or is it just like it's he, he wants to write at the runtime because he thinks it can be done with less code and uh, it's more no, I think it's only uh, maybe it's not necessary. Maybe you could uh, implement small talk about the the new runtime, but it's really uh, way more practical to do it uh, under it only one. Okay. I think he wants to make garbage collections. He wants to make garbage collection easily available and stuff like this and. It's a pretty smart um, approach to to implement runtime. Okay. Mm. Then it, it, it uh, David has the the control on both the runtime and the compiler uh, and the LLVM stuff, so uh, it's easier to. Um, so in the future, it might be hmm? so in the future, it might pay to have now own runtime, which is uh, better designed than the yes. So yeah, people that work on uh, on it only. Uh, and uh, we use Quantum not here. I'm not sure. Yeah, nobody of this guy is here. Huh? Nobody is here. <laughs> this guy is here. So and I'm not here anymore because I am just looking and uh, and <laughs> criticizing David when he he tries to uh, <coughs> write the the mi parser for Quantum. Uh, so basically that's it. And it's the last one, I guess. Last one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Try escape. <laughs> oh, that's that's a problem. So huh? Yeah. So sorry about the bad English and wrong presentation, but uh, uh, if you want a, a demo of a toilet, uh, of basically all this, unfortunately it was uh, uh, it uses the latest uh, LLVM, uh, which wasn't out uh, the uh, really in time for the for the binary release of a uh, So hopefully it. Uh, uh, it will all work for the uh, uh, zero for one release of Ecole. Uh And what else? I can do demos of uh, small talk, uh, but in the sweet far uh, way. Uh, yeah. I have a few questions. You said uh, this approach was fast. Do you have any kind of metrics comparing your small uh, the small talk? Implementation on top of Objective C versus normal Objective C. Uh, oh versus a uh, normal Objective C is just the same. Oh, okay. Basically, because the only uh, 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 what, the only the only price you might have to pay is the the conversion of uh, small integers and so on, and this is really. Uh, just a shift, uh, do whatever you want with the integer and shift back at one. So that's so why aren't more people focusing on this? Because this, uh, if it's as fast as Objective C, it should be ten well, times faster than Squeak. Yeah, something like that. Uh, so the problems I see as a small talk uh, integrist guy is. It's not the uh, the small talk uh, class hierarchy, so you don't get the reflection, you don't get all the um, runtime modifications you can get. Uh, 
you don't get the image, persistence and so on, which is quite nice. And I don't know how he handles uh, arithmetic, but uh, yeah, in small talk, the, all the, the, arithmetic, the arithmetic is a bit slow because it's two message sends for an addition and then you get the, the, the actual thing. Uh, but it's also really, really flexible, so you can add, uh, you can define addition for whatever you want and it will work um, really easy. And you don't have the, there is a code monkey, but you, you don't have a debugger, you don't have a full bound browser, you don't have refactorings yet, and so on. But this will come from, from Squeak and so on. I, I think I will try to improve this, yeah. Uh, no more question? Is this stuff in Debian, and if yes, what, what are the name of the packages? Uh, I'm not sure any of it all is in Debian. So if there is a maintainer uh, volunteering, uh, he's very welcome. <laughs> the whole GNU step and write packages in Debian are a bit... Uh, yeah, it's, yes, really it's always the, the problem. The most often people come to the channel or uh, to on the mailing list and say, well, uh, I would like uh, packages for Debian, and and then they disappear just as fast as they came. So, <laughs> well, it's not the new You have, uh, I think you have to go the the hard way and compile it yourself because it's <coughs> Debian has really some strict and restrictions on what packages go in there. And mm -hmm. yeah. there, uh, yeah, there I read some, some mail list when I was looking for how to install and push that on on Ubuntu because I needed it for my talk and, and I saw that all that was, uh, was available for Debian is really, really outdated. I don't know if and they're moving, they moving slow. Yeah. And they have some problems with some two-step specific things that are not in their set of mind. And if you want Debian to help it, then pester them again and again and again so that maybe you can break the barrier. I've got no desire to engage with it. <laughs> so yeah, the, and the problem, especially with Etoile and pragma Pragmatic Smalltalk, is that if you want the interesting stuff, it's in SVN. And <laughs> so okay. basically, anyway, you have to, to build it from scratch. Yeah. I have a small question about Faro. Uh, yes. You said it had a more mm -hmm. adult theme than uh, Squeak. Could you show us? <laughs> it looks like uh, Mac OS actually, so I don't know if that's a good for you. They have an image somewhere. So it's it's still in flux, but and I did I didn't change the the standard font uh, yet, but at least it's it's not a green, orange, and yeah. blue and whatever. So <laughs> it's a very large problem for adopting small talk for real world development. You can still enable the old STD to fix small talk. <laughs> Better than the clean. <laughs> Yeah, thank you.